Kate Bowman with Marketing Divas and I'm hanging out with Jeremy Pound from Juicy Results and we've got another quick video for you. Um, quick question, when's the last time you checked your email? If you're anything like us, probably within the last couple of minutes and uh, probably on your mobile phone, we would think. Um, so today this video is all about how to optimize your emails for mobile because if you're a business owner or marketer, you're probably using email as a way to reach out to your prospects and clients and you probably spend a lot of time crafting and creating a message that you want to get out to them and they might not be seeing it on their phone the way that you want them to see it. So that's obviously really important. Um, about 61% of people are checking their email, at least seeing some of their emails on their mobile phone. So that's a really big number and it's growing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this is interesting. I looked into our last newsletter when we talked about this and 33% of the people who opened it, opened it on an iPhone. So it was the most popular client of all of the opens, more than Outlook or Mac Mail or any of the desktop programs. Wow, that's a really big number. Yeah, absolutely. So are you optimizing your emails for mobile? Well, certainly now. So we, I think we were always kind of aware of it, but mm -hmm. that really made us understand that we had to think this through. And we had designed the original template on a desktop several years ago. Um, so we, we have some tips to share with you on how to make sure that your email is optimized for a mobile device. Awesome. So the first tip is you have to test. And not just test on one device, but test across devices. So um, that means tablets and phones, iPhone and Android. Um, the way that the text zooms and, and, and moves and resizes is a little bit different on each of those devices, so it's important to actually test that. So first and foremost, when you create the email and campaign monitor or constant contact, most, most of those programs have the ability to send out a test email first. So talk to your friends, to your coworkers. Uh, if you don't have an Android device or if you don't have something, uh, hopefully they do and you can take a look on, the, on uh, what your email looks like on that program specifically. You should be testing anyway. Absolutely. It's a kind of a no-brainer. That's why <laughs> yeah, I'm just sure any I kind of like, first. Yeah, definitely get people to see your email before you send it out to hundreds or thousands of people. So on that note, when you do test, things to look for are that you want to make sure that your font size is large enough, um, specifically at least 13 pixels in size. So a lot of people, um, you know, especially designers, really like that small, crisp type, and they go to 10 or 11 pixels. Well, the, the minimum size that the iPhone will even show is 13 pixels. So if it's anything smaller than that, it's going to unnaturally be blown up and break apart. It's going to look terrible. So just keep that in mind and make sure that you're using a decent font size. And then let these devices do their resizing the way that they do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So on that note, in terms of design, you want to make sure that you really simplify your design. So it's very tempting to, to over-design this, to have multiple columns, um, all kinds of different headlines and jump lists. Um, but when you're reading on a screen like this versus a desktop, you have a lot less real estate. You're also probably a lot busier. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure that you keep it very simple and to the point. So just simplify that design, um, you know, kind of narrow it down, use raw text. You can still make it high impact. That doesn't mean it won't look great. You can still use great imagery, um, but just keep it simple. Yeah, and like you said, it's not about the images. It's about the content that mm -hmm. you have in there. So focus more on the content and less on this huge design and with all these images and things that people really don't yeah, need to see. Exactly. You're really doing that more for you than for your, yeah. your audience. Exactly. Uh, so great. So when it comes to simplifying, uh, we also want to keep the content concise. Uh, so people are probably, if they're checking email on a phone or a device, there's a good chance that they're in between meetings or they're on the go and you don't have their full attention. So not only is it not easy to scroll through a novel on a phone compared to a desktop, there's a good chance that you have even less of their attention. So by simplifying the di design and keeping the content more concise, focus on what you really want to do, what's the main takeaway, the main bullet points, you're going to get a lot better response from your, from your newsletter marketing, probably both on mobile and on desktop. Mm -hmm. That's just a good rule in general. And so the last thing that I want to bring up is that call to action. If you're going to get them to click somewhere or go somewhere else, um, think about that somebody has to use their finger to, to click on that. And so don't stack a bunch of links right on top of each other. A hyperlink, sent, you know, words within a sentence really close. It's really easy with your mouse to pick out a precise pinpoint, but you don't want the user zooming in four or five times. You know, this shouldn't be like playing Operation to right. click on you know, the right <laughs> link that you want to go to. Um, so, so reduce the number of links in general, but make sure you space them out so that they're easy to click on. That is a good point. And really, I mean, just think about the way that you use email and mobile and think about you, um, the kinds of emails that you get that you really appreciate that it's easy to click through. Maybe you register for an event or you, um, it was a really short and concise message and you thought 
you thought that that email was pretty good and it mm -hmm. got it actually got the point across. So just be a little bit more conscious of the email that you're getting um, and making sure that you know you can take some of the things that you've seen and use those kind of best practices in the emails that you're creating as well. So we hope that you enjoyed these tips. Um, when you're creating your next email, be sure to consider them so that you are optimizing your emails. And we hope you liked the video. So if you did, please comment below and let us know. We'd love to know your thoughts. And for more juicy marketing tips, check out marketingdivas.com and juicybeautiful.com.